We've got a sneaky winter storm heading eastward right now, and it's going to bring different types of impacts from showers and storms with some flooding in the south to snowfall up to a foot of it into parts of southern New England. Got the details on a big ridge with warm temperatures that's coming up next, plus an atmospheric river that's going to be into the west as we head into this week. All the details on that, plus an intriguing look at February with cold and snow on the line then. Everything you need to know here. Welcome into this video. We're taking a look at that satellite imagery here, your water vapor imagery on WeatherBell. This is a WeatherBell map. You can get your free trial in the description. You can see showers and storms pushing through parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama on the southern end of a developing low pressure system working its way with some showers and storms on up into parts of Missouri, Illinois, as well as other zones of the southwestern Ohio Valley and into the Midwest. By the way, if you enjoy the rest of this video, hit that subscribe button. But here we go. Let's talk about severe weather aspects first, then we'll get to snow, then we'll talk about the longer range pattern later in the video but you're looking at severe weather outlook for our Saturday first you can see southeastern parts of Alabama as well as the Florida Panhandle with a chance of severe weather but a low end severe weather threat extends all the way on up into Tennessee as well as the western Carolina so let's pan this on out and kind of take a look at that threat for the day today most of our threat down here in that slight risk zone that we've got here in southeast Alabama and in the parts of the western Florida Panhandle are going to be associated with this line that's ongoing as I film this video and into the early afternoon hours we'll be watching it from Columbia Columbus, Georgia, and Montgomery, Alabama, on down to Dothan in Alabama and Pensacola there in Florida. These zones getting very heavy rain, so maybe a low-end flood threat. I'm also watching, of course, the potential for especially gusty winds along this line. Again, as it moves through those zones, I am circling on your screen right now. We'll continue to see that line make its way on off towards the east throughout the evening hours, but it does look like it'll be falling apart. Um, maybe some heavy rain through parts of the western Carolinas around, say, 6, 7 o'clock this evening. But we're going to have a little secondary front, kind of like what we give at these upper-level low-pressure systems. It's going to be draping its way through places like Nashville, 5, 6, 7 o'clock central time this evening, heading eastward through parts of northern Alabama as well. Once the sun gets down this evening as we go towards say 8 9 o'clock especially with the sun down a couple of hours ago I guess at that point right um, you can see places like Knoxville Tennessee um, Atlanta and Georgia these areas just to your west some showers and storms could we briefly see a spin up tornado along the secondary band yes and I'll show you why here in just a second that threat could even persist into parts of places like Greenville South Carolina um, as we go into the midnight hour although again that threat is very low but again just that goes to show you there that we've kind of got two little pieces of energy here associated with the wraparound flow of this low pressure system. Now, here's your temperature forecast from the HRRR model. Again, this morning, already in the 60s across much of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, and Florida. Um, as we make our way just ahead of this line through the midday hour, we're going to see that line, say, pushing through southeast Alabama and parts of western Florida Panhandle. Temperatures warming up into the upper 70s, even near 80 degrees in south Georgia, um, close to the coast of South Carolina as well. So again, that's very supportive of that earlier day line. Nonetheless, though, it does look like it breaks apart as it goes into those coastal zones. Um, but again, we, you see that little small strip of some 60s stretching all the way on up there into central and eastern Tennessee this evening, say around 7, 8 o'clock. That could certainly certainly um, set the stage for this right here, the significant tornado parameter, to rise a little bit. Now, it goes all the way on up to 10, um, and we've got a 1 to a 3 there over parts of northern Alabama and eastern Tennessee as we go into this evening with that secondary little line I showed you. Nonetheless, that's while this isn't the highest thing, we have to watch out for the chance of a few spin-ups as that heads eastward as well, again, into those zones I had showed you earlier on the future radar. Now let's switch on over to the wintry weather side of things. We've got a little snowfall trying to break out here on the back side of the system into the midnight hour of tonight over parts of Missouri, northeast Arkansas, into um, Illinois, as well as parts of western Kentucky. Wherever this event does wrap up there, I guarantee you some higher elevations could see some, uh, you know, some accumulation on some grassy surfaces surfaces there um, of that snowfall. But overall, this is just going to be a rain event for everyone across parts of that zone. And But then again, notice we get a little bit of snow just breaking out towards the tail end of the event, again, into places like Indianapolis, Indiana as well. Um, so you can just see that overwhelming trend that this is going to be mainly a rain event, but we get the winter storm side of things to really start to crank up here, not only with that wraparound band there in parts of Indiana as it tries to pick up, where our main snow event is going to be here into parts of North Pennsylvania, northern Pennsylvania, southern New York, as well as into Connecticut and Rhode Island here getting going as we head into the early morning hours of our Sunday. Um, you can see this pushing through Scranton, PA, all the way on up to Albany, New York. There will be some warmer air embedding itself in the system, so I wouldn't be shocked if there's some periods where we get some rain to try and kind of infiltrate 
infiltrate that snowfall. But there will be heavier pockets of snow in northern PA and then over there into southern New England as well. It's going to be a very close call for Boston because of the ocean being right there, of course. Kind of got that rain-snow line um, kind of favoring rain just because of that warmer push. But if you live inland, just inland of Boston there and north of this area, I'm circling that's going to be mostly rain from Philly to New York to Boston. You will probably be seeing snowfall in the main event of this into southern New York through Albany. And over into southern Vermont and New Hampshire as well. This could include places like Concord, New Hampshire, getting in on some heavier snowfall. Towards the very end of this event, as we say, head towards 10, 11 o'clock Sunday night, going into our Monday morning, early morning as well. That's when the snow event will really begin to start to wind on down, um, but it will include parts of southern Maine as well, and even Boston could see some wraparound snowfall. So here's your forecast snowfall through the entirety of this event with the National Digital Forecast Database by the National Weather Service here. Totals in those blue shades are at least two inches. You can see a stretch of mostly two to four inch totals from southern and western New York, far northern PA through southeast and southeast central parts of New York, and then on over there as well into southern Maine. Some of these purplish shades, though, that you see just west of places like Albany, through parts of western Massachusetts as well, wouldn't rule out some locations getting closer to 6 to 12 inches of snow in those locations. Um, and then in a place like Boston, maybe 2 to 4. Forecast rainfall through Tuesday with the National Digital Forecast Database here for kind of the rest of the areas just seeing precipitation out of the system. A solid half an inch plus in those blue shades on your screen, and that does encompass a lot of the southeast um, parts of the Tennessee Valley, the Ohio Valley, the southeastern Midwest, and then all the way on up there into the northeastern United States. So pretty much everyone here. The best flood threat, though, is going to be there in the western Carolinas and eastern Tennessee there as storms kind of bank up against the mountains. Now, one other thing I do want to talk about with the entirety of the storm system here as it moves through the east is the fact that the winds are going to kick up just a little bit now. As we head towards, say, 4 or 5 o'clock on your Saturday afternoon here, some gusts into parts of southeast Missouri, northeast Arkansas, northwest Tennessee, and western Kentucky could be closer to 40, 50 miles per hour at the high end. Overall, though, this is going to be kind of one of those 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gust systems with a very big swath of those level of gusts that you can see in this zone I'm circling here. But again, if you're in those green shades into the midnight hour of tonight, that's where you could be picking up some 30, 35 mile per hour gusts certainly not out of the question. And as we make our way into our Sunday here, as you wake up on your Sunday morning, 9, 10 a.m., you can see some of those gusts closer to the New England shores there of near New Jersey, coming out of the south or southeast, kind of around 30, 40 miles per hour. Some gusts coming from the north and northeast there um, into parts of Ohio all the way on down to Illinois. Those could be 30 to 40 miles per hour. Those are the higher end zones at that point. Um, and then the, you know, the northwesterly gusts continue 15 to 25 there through most of the east as we head into our late Sunday night. Only places still seem some stronger gusts in that snower, snowier zone there, snower zone, snowier zone there into southern New England. Could see some gusts still 30 to 40 miles per hour there at that point as the system wraps on up. Now as the system wraps on up, we kind of see some colder air still lingering around here in the parts of the eastern United States, but the very overwhelming trend is going to be this much warmer than average air that's going to be making its way to the north here. So if you live from the four corners all the way on up there into parts of southeast Canada, we're going to be seeing considerable warmth building on up into these zones, 15, 25 degrees above normal for this time of the year. We'll continue to see this really get ongoing, especially there um, in the parts of Montana, the Dakotas, Minnesota, as well as Wisconsin. That's where those highest anomalies are really going to be present. Um, continuing to play this on out, though, look at here as we go Wednesday, say 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the afternoon of your January 31st here, ending the month. 20 to 30 degrees above normal. This is just pretty abnormal for this time of the year, and this ridging will continue. Um, but while it is abnormal for this time of the year in a normal case, considering that we are in an El Nino year, this is not necessarily uncommon to see that ridging really building up there. Eventually, though, we do begin to see this colder air kind of bank up against it there along the west coast, and we'll have to see how that impacts that high pressure system over the north central plains. Now, of course, banking up against it, here we go again. Here's that um, atmospheric river. As we make our way, say, Saturday late in the day circling this zone here in the Pacific Northwest some showers maybe some higher elevation snowfall there into the Cascades continuing to see Pacific Northwest precipitation through our Sunday that kind of winds down we get a little bit of a break on Monday then as we go into our Tuesday that's when it looks like precipitation returns to the Pacific Northwest into our Wednesday is when it returns across the rest of the West Coast and look at how it really picks on up here um, heavy rain banking on up right along that immediate West Coast some spots there in the Cascades of Washington as well as the Sierras there in California could pick up some brief heavy snowfall and that could accumulate pretty quickly with some foot plus totals there um, that system, again, into our Wednesday 
night into our Thursday, continuing to head eastward into other parts of the Rockies as well. Some spots here into Idaho, Nevada, on down into the four corners, seeing some snowfall break out there as well. Um, lower elevations continue to see that heavier rain. This will accumulate to a lot, though, there. Could we see this eventually head on out over the plains towards the end of this week, Cert or next week, I should call it? Certainly not out of the question. Here's your rainfall forecast, though, through February 3rd with that Euro model. Spots closer to the coast could pick up close to 2 to 4 inches there from northwest California all the way on up there to places like Seattle and Washington. Um, all the way on down there, there, closer to long Los Angeles and San Diego, an inch to 3 inches of rain looking to be on the table, so some flood threats coming there. Now, we're looking at your previous 7-day temperature anomaly. So the date on the left side of your screen is going to encompass the last seven days before it. So it's February 4th through the 11th. Here's your colder than average air with those Euro ensembles here closer to the West Coast. Um, at 5, 15 degrees below normal looking to be quite widespread at that point. So as we go the 4th through the 11th, that cold air is going to have to go somewhere. And this is an intriguing February pattern I want to mention. Look at how that cold air kind of heads eastward. And by the time we head towards the middle part of the month, so the 13th through the 20th, we're going to see that cold air kind of spread on out five degrees below normal across the entirety of the country with these anomalies here except for the far north central u.s could that be the signal that we're getting here from those euro ensembles yes and could that be the signal we need for maybe some bigger east coast snowstorms yes and could this also be the you know the signal that we're looking for um for the fixing of those jet streams to form that certainly so so we'll keep a watch on that but for now please hit that subscribe button for accurate easy to understand and passionate forecasts if you want a free trial of weather bell hit that link in the description that's all for this one